Well, if you've uh, seen the previous uh, videos, you realize that we are regarding the ultimate ground of existence as God. And that is the basis of our theology. Now, you might wonder, is this justified? Well, you can find this idea in various religions. Not that it's predominant, but you can find it. In Christianity, Thomas Aquinas said, God is sheer existence, subsisting of his very nature. Now, St. Thomas uh, uh, uses the word his, but sheer existence is not a he. He was a Carthusian monk, Roman Catholic monk, who said God is subsistent being itself. Uh, the idea of subsistent being is what stands under existence. In Judaism, there's a quote that says there's nothing in the whole universe except God himself. In Islam, reality is independent of any creator. This existence is all-embracing. This existence is therefore the very person of God. Okay. So they're mixing this personal and impersonal view. A Hinduism. God alone is the real and permanent substance. All else is illusionary and impermanent. Brahman, which is the, uh, the Hindu word for ultimate ground of existence, at least in my view, is the only reality, ever pure, ever eliminated, ever free. Buddhism. There is an unborn, an unoriginated, an uncreated, an unformed. Now these terms go to the idea that uh, ultimate ground of existence, well, let's say, like energy, cannot either be created or destroyed. I know this is very sketchy. You'll have to think about this. Check out your own religion. Now, if we're going to do natural theology, what else can we do? Other theologies are supernatural theologies. They're based on supposed revelations. So you have the Bible, you have the Quran, you have the Book of Mormon, you even have the writings of L. Ron Hubbard, if you want to include him. And these writings are accepted as gospel. And the idea is that God is so far beyond us that unless God revealed himself, let's say is in the Bible, we would have no way of knowing and understanding God. So these are supernatural theologies. And there's some obvious problems. First of all, they don't agree. The New Testament says Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. The Quran says God neither begets nor is begotten. Now even in one tradition, even in Christianity, does the Bible support predestination or not? Does, this, does it support some Christians believe that all people will eventually be saved. Other Christians believe that no, some people go to hell forever. Who's right? How do you interpret these writings? They disagree with each other. People who accept the same writing disagree with each other. There seems to be no way to get to the truth. You just accept and that's it, end of story. And this is, as an epistemological method, is a primitive epistemological method. It's the child's way of knowing. Something is true because somebody said so. And let's take this a step further. Now, I don't necessarily believe in aliens, but just to make my point, let's imagine that somewhere in the universe, there are alien beings that look something like rabbits. And they have a story about the rabbit who shed his fur for the sake of all rabbits everywhere. And let's suppose somewhere else in the universe, there are beings that look something like spiders and they have their story about the mother spider who from her own body spun the web of the universe. And let's suppose we were to meet these beings. We would probably not be inclined to worship the uh, rabbit who shed his fur for rabbits everywhere or the mother spider. And they probably would look um, not with favor on beings like Jesus or Krishna because they were human. And being a rabbit or a spider, I guess humans might look repulsive to them. What kind of God could we have in common? Now, you might not think it's important to have a God in common, but if you think about it, science, which seems to get at objective truth, has a way at arriving at a single consensus. 
not on the fringes, fringes on the on the new discoveries there's often disagreement but basic chemistry basic physics is settled and there's no such thing as chinese physics there's no such thing as african chemistry there's no such thing as french geology there's just geology chemistry physics because those sciences deal with objective realities and there is only one objective reality now if god is an objective reality there should be a way to make statements about that objective reality, not based on the basically childish epistemological method of somebody said so, and that's that. There should be some way of coming to a common consensus. I can't say I know what that way is. I'm trying to explore it in this series. But if we're going to do natural theology, unbiased natural theology, then we have to begin with the natural world. And you might say, well, what about the supernatural world? I don't accept the supernatural world, but for a subtle reason. Not that I am just dismissing it out of hand, but that we do not know the limits of the natural world. So we cannot with confidence declare anything supernatural. Supernatural as a concept is fine. It refers to something beyond the natural world. But it's a concept that has no footing, because how do we know what's beyond the natural world? A thousand, not even a thousand, as little as 250 years ago, lightning was considered a punishment from God. And there's a case where Ben Franklin invented the lightning rod, and some preachers in Boston were upset because they convinced, they accused him of blasphemy of trying to quote, frustrate the artillery of heaven. Now we know how to create lightning. Maybe someday we'll know how to raise a man from the dead who's been dead three, three days. I don't know. But anything that we witness, we cannot prove to be supernatural. With the technology we have today, go to a primitive person's hut and plant a little camera a little Wi-Fi camera and a little radio receiver planted somewhere in their hut where they don't know and then leave. They walk in, they hear a voice and the voice, the person behind the voice can see them. They can talk to them. The voice is coming from nowhere. They would be certain that was supernatural. Yet we know all it takes is a little bit of inexpensive electronics and we could do that. So we do not know the limits of the natural world. So we cannot declare anything supernatural with confidence, which is sure, with assurance, and know that we're right. So we're doing natural theology. We're in the natural world. We're trying to find a common entity that even aliens could agree exists. Whether that is full, that whether that entity fully deserves to be called God is something we have to consider in future talks. But I've put some quotes up in the beginning of this talk. And if you look, you will find this idea in many, many religions. So that's it for now. Thank you.